Hi everyone, it's Paul from This Design That. If you're new here, this is a channel focusing on the intersection between art and craft, design and technology. Today we're going to be looking at some technology and we're going to be reviewing the Voron 0.1 LDO kit. And I want to say thank you to the sponsor of today's video, PCBWay. They offer 3D printing, PCB manufacturing and other services helpful for any maker or startup. From CNC machining to injection molding, they can handle pretty much anything you need. On top of that, they offer low volume orders and fast turnaround times for all services, which is great for those one-off prototypes. Check out PCBWay.com today. I've been interested in the Voron 3D printers for a few years now, but I've always been turned off because you'd have to source a huge amount of materials all by yourself, or you could get a cheap kit from AliExpress or eBay and those types of places. But the quality of those kits wasn't always the best. The LDO kit seemed like the perfect choice for me because it contained genuine high quality parts and also it comes with a pre-made wiring kit and some other mods which make the process of building it just a little bit more easier. Now with these Voron 3D printers they do use 3D printed parts as you can see. You want to print them from ABS. You don't want to use PETG or PLA because it will warp under the higher temperatures. If you're like me and you're unable to print ABS, then there are a few ways you can get these printed parts. First is AliExpress, Etsy, eBay. All of these places sell 3D printed parts. There is quite a high markup on the parts compared to if you were just printing it yourself, as you would expect. Or you can use the official Voron Print It Forward scheme where Voron users will kindly print the parts for you at no markup. They will just ask you to cover the cost of the materials, which is about, I think, 70 pounds or euros for the, the ABS uh, to print all of these parts. The only downside to this is that there is actually quite a long wait and you can see the amount of people that are in the queue for the various different regions in the world. If you don't want to wait like I didn't, then the other option is to head over to the Voron Discord and there is a marketplace where people will sell their printing services. If you are in the UK, I can definitely recommend Weaselus. He printed all the parts for me. He did an amazing job. They look really nice. And I just want to say thank you to Weaselus for doing this for me because it takes a huge amount of time to print all of these parts. And a lot of people in this community, they only charge the cost of the material and just a tiny little shipping fee. Um, so yeah, it's, it's an awesome community and things like this to really help to allow people to get access to these printers. So just a little bit about my 3D printer experience. I have basically zero experience building a 3D printer. You can see this printer behind me here is the Anycubic i3 Mega. This was the only 3D printer I've built. And soon as you just have to bolt two pieces together, I wouldn't exactly call it a 3D printer that I built myself. So I would say that I'm fairly inexperienced at building a 3D printer. So the LDO kit, let's talk about the unboxing first of all. It was well packaged and everything was clearly labeled and separated into the mechanical, the electronic, the structural parts. This just makes it easy to organize and find while you are doing the build. One small complaint I did have was that the aluminum extrusion, this orange extrusion here, it didn't have the letters that correspond to the to the manual and it just meant that I had to measure and double check that I was using the right extrusion each time. It's a small complaint but if they just put the letters on the aluminium extrusion then it would have just saved me a bit of time. As I said previously the LDO kit it contains genuine parts and it's nice that all of the parts they do come in the genuine boxes so you know that you are getting the real deal. The build was pretty easy. I think the LDO kit made it quite an enjoyable experience. It really did feel like I was putting together a giant Lego set. While I was researching the Voron, I was looking at other people building these printers and I think some of the mods that these have, such as the pre-made wiring kit and also the drilled and tapped linear rail mounting bars, they really do save some of the tedious work that goes into building this printer. I don't think most people will struggle with building this LDO kit. Most important thing to do is just to double check that you've preloaded the right amount of nuts into all of these extrusions before you go ahead and bolt the frame together. You cannot skip a single step. The official documentation of the build, it could be a little bit better in some places. I was a little bit confused by looking at some of the drawings. But with the manual combined with some of the build series that are on YouTube, 
YouTube, most notably Greg's Maker Corner and also Nero 3D builds, you get a pretty good idea of how to put this together and I'm pretty sure with those things combined, they'll answer most of your questions. I'm useless at anything electrical, so having the pre-made wiring kit was a huge time saver for me and I think it's worth the cost of this kit alone because I cannot imagine how much time it would have taken me to get all of this wiring cut to the right length to get everything crimped and terminated properly and it just saves me a big headache so yeah if, if you're not really too sure about doing wiring if you don't have much experience with it then that's just another reason to recommend the LDO kit and another point about the wiring kit is from a safety perspective I just feel more comfortable knowing that I'm using wiring that has been what I would guess is more professionally done than what I can do and when I'm leaving this printer in another room and it's printing for hours, or sometimes I might even leave the house and leave it printing, it just gives me a little bit of peace of mind knowing that most of the wiring in this has been done by a professional. So the build itself took me, I would say, approximately four to five days. I split it up into three to four hours each day just to space it out and not make it so much of a slog. I think you could do it within one weekend, but... I would rather have enjoyed the process and just spread it out a little bit longer. I would say the most difficult part of the build for me was to get the initial frame put together and to make sure that you've got all of the nuts preloaded exactly as described in the manual. I didn't really understand the importance of preloading these nuts when I first jumped into building this and I missed two nuts and I had to take apart the frame and preload them in again because once you once you bolt this aluminum extrusion together, there is really no way to get these nuts in. One way around this would be to drill a bigger hole into the aluminum extrusion, so that then you could actually just drop the nut in and then slide it into the extrusion. So I think that would be quite a nice little mod if each one of these aluminum extrusions just had a little hole drilled kind of close to the edge. So if you do miss any, you can drop it in. But you know, I appreciate that's a lot of work to do. Really, you should just follow the instructions properly and you won't have any issues. But yeah, I cannot emphasize enough the importance of, you know, double checking you've got all of the nuts preloaded into the rails before you start putting everything together. So once I had all of the frame put together, it was time to start doing the wiring. And as I keep saying here, yeah, thanks to the wiring kit that you get, this is very, very easy. It is really just plug things in and then just tighten them up. All the wires are labeled, which makes it very, very easy to understand what you need to put into what. And it's just a case of following the manual. LDO also have their own wiring manual on their site, which I found a little bit more descriptive and easier to follow. But again, you just follow the instructions. I doubt anyone will have any issues. So I'd got it all built in about four days and now it was time to move on to setting up the printer, which is installing the Raspberry Pi and installing what I was using was main cell. So I had to get that all set up as well. Now this Raspberry Pi setup and the controller setup took me about four to five hours. I'm not very experienced in this. I usually rely on my partner Lakshmi who is much better at coding and understanding these things. But again, it's just a case of following the manual step by step. There are various different videos on YouTube as well that you can check out on you know, how to get your Raspberry Pi set up, how to get main cell installed. Uh, it's great being able to have certain controls on your mobile phone. I like being able to, in real time, adjust the Z offset and also to adjust the flow of the extrusion just to make sure that you're getting a nice initial layer on the bed and you can literally look at the printer while it's printing, you can have your phone in your hand and you can control it through that, which was really cool. So following the manual, you will get to the stage where you start to calibrate the thing and I calibrated the Z offset and then I also manually leveled the bed and then I printed a Voron calibration cube and I was pretty much blown away by this. This was meant to be 30 mil by 30 mil by 30 mil cube um, and it is within 0 0.08 millimeters. So that is more than good enough for me. Um, I thought I was going to be kind of spending a whole day calibrating this thing, kind of tweaking the belts, you know, counting the steps on the step motors and all those type of things. But if you just follow the steps in the manual, the LDO kit as well, this thing is printing perfect out of the bag. I'm pretty sure I could probably get it even closer to 30 by 30 by 30, but within 0.1 of a millimeter is, is fine for me at the moment. The surface finish could probably be improved by doing some, I think you can do some tweaking to, to, the, to the movement and to the inertia compensation as well. That's kind of like advanced uh, calibration that you can do, um, but maybe I'll get around to that at, at some stage. But yeah, for me, you know, I'm using this really for just kind of functional parts. I'm not really too bold about how it looks. 
yeah, perfect. Can't really complain. After a few initial prints, I did see some creep set in and it was most noticeable on the bed. So looking at the bed from this angle, it was visibly drooping down. It wasn't a case of the, the ABS having melted or anything like that. It was just some of the screws that attached the, uh, the bed to these linear rails just come a little bit loose and just in general you should go around the whole entire printer once you've printed it a few times check for any creep that's come in and just tighten everything once again there is some basic maintenance you can do such as lubricating the rails um, i just put on a tiny bit of bearing grease onto the rails and i think that will be good enough for you know the next six months to a year of printing with this thing so having used the printer for about a month now yeah i absolutely love this thing the voron printers are brilliant i think the ldo kit is a really good introduction into the Voron series. I think that most people will not have an issue with getting this thing built. It looks awesome. Um, I love the color combinations and it's certainly a step up from my i3 mega uh, i still use this thing obviously to print bigger things I'll, I'll switch over to the to the i3 mega it's still going strong but i just wanted something that was small compact quiet because the i3 mega is a little bit loud uh, and i wanted something faster i print a lot of prototypes and i print small things that are used in in bigger projects and yeah the voron 0.1 it kind of ticked all of the boxes for that I've got this set at 140 millimeters per second print speed and it handles it very comfortably. I've seen people pushing this thing to 250, 300. I think I even saw a thousand uh, millimeters per second print speed, which is insane. So these printers, they can handle high speeds, which is good because it, it does cut down on the print time. So I'm very happy with the printer. I'm very happy with the kit. I highly recommend it. But what would I do differently if I was building this again? Firstly, I would definitely get one of those battery powered screwdrivers. I screwed all of these nuts and bolts together uh, using just an Allen wrench that come with the kit. And yeah, I could have just saved myself a lot of sore fingers by getting one of those. I also would have 3D printed some nut carriers that will just keep the nuts in position that you want in the rail. Because a lot of the time when you are trying to feed a bolt through a plastic part, for instance, and you're trying to get the, the nut lined up. These nuts are really temperamental to get into their position. Um, and I find myself having to kind of like shake the printer to try and move the nut just so it gets into the position where I can push it into the bolt. Also, I would have just used a little bit of blue tack just to stop the nuts from actually falling out when you are moving this frame around and getting that initial frame set up because that happened a few times. And lastly, with the LDO kit, make sure that you peel off the acrylic protective covers before you slide it into the aluminium extrusion. Um, I thought that the protective covers were gonna be your typical plastic kind and you can kind of pull it away from one go. The covers on these panels were actually paper and it just means that I can't actually peel off the protective cover that is sitting underneath the aluminium extrusion. So I've basically just got a, a section where I just can't get off the protective cover. I mean, luckily you can't really see it. It's really small, but I'll show you some images here where I, I just can't get it off. I thought I was being clever by not taking off the protective covers until I've got it all built because I didn't want to scratch the acrylic. But yeah, just make sure that um, your protective covers are the paper or plastic kind, if they are paper, make sure you peel it all off before you slide it in. So that's it, that's my Voron 0.1 LDO kit review. Highly recommended. I will put links in the descriptions to the LDO kit and I also put links to the Discord where you can find really helpful people like Weaselus who might be able to print the parts for you. If you've got any questions about this printer or the build, uh, and also if you've got one yourself and you've done any further mods to it, I'd really like to know because I'm thinking about ways that I could maybe improve this even more. But that is it for today. Thank you for listening. I'll catch you all later.